Look out, guys. We got the Hun coming out of the wood line. Let's deal with it, and then we'll get on to our video. I gotta hurry. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Hope you're having a great day today. Got a really cool rifle to show you. All right, we're no stranger to the M1 carbine. Uh, we've shown off quite a few on the channel. Uh, one of the ones that Brandy has is a GI uh, M1 carbine that I bought for her, and we've used it in several videos. And I've always had a general disposition <laughs> against uh, M1s that aren't GI made but we are gonna be looking at a newly produced one, and I think you guys are gonna be surprised. These are actually really well-made rifles. Uh, definitely wanna take a moment to thank our friends at Big Daddy Unlimited. Uh, you guys may uh, remember recently on Facebook, I posted some links to some M1 carbine-related stuff, uh, both the paratroopers, uh, the full-size standard rifles, uh, reloading dies, ammunition, things of that nature, magazines, which we have here. Uh, we thought it'd be cool to put together a video on a paratrooper model. Um, you know, and they were nice enough to uh, give us what we need for this video uh, to make it for you here today. So uh, definitely a big thanks to them for that. Uh, we do have a variety of different magazines. Um, the magazine that ships with this gun, now this is brought in by Auto Ordnance, um, but these are also sold under like the car brand name. So if you buy a car uh, M1 carbine, it's gonna say, you know, Auto Ordnance on it. Apparently, I guess, I guess they're the same, not sure. Uh, from every indication I've been able to find, it's, it's basically the same gun. I have found, uh, I have handled the Inland version. You know, Inland is making M1 carbines again. They're doing um, like the uh, advisor pistols and things like that and some of their paratroopers. And then they're doing some like modernized M1 carbines. I have to say, I picked up one of the Inlands at a local shop not long ago and the stock mechanism was super, super loose and wobbly. Like it would just rattle all over the place. Uh, one thing that made me gravitate to this exact one is the fact that the stock mechanism is nice and solid. When it locks in place, it doesn't wobble. I have handled a lot of original GI uh, paratroopers, and they all seem to have that little bit of a stock wobble. I don't know if that was just, I guess, from years and years of use, and they get all loose after being, you know, continuously opened and closed a lot. Uh, but this is a paratrooper M1. You can see has a folding stock mechanism. And back during the war, you know, these things were very, very well favored with the troops. Um, they loved them. And the M1 carbine, I feel, you know, got not necessarily a bad rap. It actually got a good rap. Uh, a lot of people, uh, troops back then, loved this rifle for its light handling characteristics. You could maneuver it really easily inside of tight spaces or inside of buildings, whereby the M1 Garand, while a great rifle, is a little bit difficult being a full-size rifle to maneuver into uh, tight spaces. Um, the fast follow-up shots, light recoil, and really good accuracy uh, on this rifle really proved itself well inside of like 200 yards here in the war. So it's cool that companies like Carr, you know, are offering, you know, an M1 carbine and a paratrooper, especially because original paratroopers that are actual GI rifles are incredibly expensive. Uh, so for us average folks, uh, this is a great way for us to get into something that scratches that itch without having to spend a whole ton of money. Now you can get the 30 round magazines. Uh, this is what we would consider an M2 magazine. This is a car produced magazine that I ordered from Big Daddy, so let's check it out. We are gonna be running a variety of ammunition for you here today. That was some uh, 110 grain soft point uh, 30 carbine out of the factory 15 shot magazine. This is a 30 round M2 magazine loaded with 110 grain uh, full metal jacket, tool ammo, steel cased ball ammunition. Look at that. <laughs> that is cool, man. Makes me uh, feel like an advisor in NAM. We're gonna go on a patrol, okay? <laughs> cool stuff. All right, let's have some fun. This is almost like shooting fish in a barrel, but I just wanted to, you know, see how this thing handles at, you know, close, closer ranges. Hmm. 
That's cool. Okay. All right, that was our 30 rounds of tool ammo, steel case. All right, we got 30 rounds of uh, soft point again from SMB. All right, locally, I was able to find a little bit of the uh, Aguila. I got the soft point and the tool ammo on BDU along with the magazines and the rifle. Really cool stuff. Okay, that runs nice. And I'm going to apply the safety, fold the stock, and you can see with the uh, 30 round magazine in place and the stock folded. It is a very uh, compact setup. This would make one heck of a little short barreled rifle. You know, this type of setup, maybe with a uh, barrel shortened back, would be a lot of fun. Okay. I will say the peep sights uh, are not bad, they are a little bit crowded. You know, we have very bright light. I mean, we're in the middle of the day here, it's 100 degrees outside, it is hot as Hades out here. Um, I could see uh, in a wide variety of situations, uh, the sights are usable. Uh, they are a little bit small of an aperture, okay, but uh, definitely usable sights. All right, let's have some fun. Uh-oh. It's weird. That didn't extract the case. It is a fired case though. It's strange. Heck yeah. Okay. A lot of people don't know. Uh, on the M1 carbine to lock the bolt mechanism to the rear. There's a little tab right here you can push down. There's a recess right here on the right side of the receiver. You just pull back, push down right here, let go a little bit, and that holds the bolt to the rear, okay? Uh, that's strange. I had a, a failure of the gun to extract a uh, fired case. That's a little weird. Um, the gas system on the M1 carbine is really cool. It's just like a little miniature tappet. Um, Carbine Williams was the gentleman's name that uh, designed uh, the uh, tappet system in the M1 carbine. It's a very rugged and reliable setup. Uh, they were reasonably uh, inexpensive to make uh, back in the day, so it was an easy gun to mass produce, and it was actually one of the most mass produced uh, guns of World War II uh, was the M1 carbine. Uh, usually the, the full Woodstock version, of course, which is a very, very great gun in its own regard. Um, the paratrooper version is definitely one of, in my opinion, one of the coolest guns of World War II. I mean, these things are just fantastic. I could totally see where this would be a wonderful, uh, you know, light setup, great for in-close fighting. Uh, and I will add that in modern times, fast forwarding, uh, you know, to now, uh, that the M1 carbine still has a place. Uh, I know some people, Maybe you're not a black rifle type of person, but you want you know, a, a gun that can hold a 30 round magazine and fire a pretty reasonably powerful cartridge. Uh, the 30 carbine, unfortunately, is fell by the wayside by a lot of people, but it actually has some really nice power inside of 100 yards. Uh, we've done some good ballistics gel testing with ball and with expanding ammunition. I know we've tested some of the Underwood offerings. So there are some modern bullet designs that are bringing the M1 carbine into the modern era. and. Um, you know, they are a great rifle for home defense, um, very easy to maneuver, very uh, easy to shoot, light recoil. Uh, I would say the recoil impulse is no more than a standard AR-15. Uh, dare I say, if you take a regular 14 and a half inch AR, or even a 16 inch, and you shoot a 55 grain ball uh, round out of a standard AR, and then I put a 110 grain service load in this M1, and we get in a room to room fight, we're relatively toe-to-toe -to -toe in a room-to-room -room fight in terms of foot-pounds of energy and power. Okay, both the guns are generating similar power at that distance. It's just where the ARs really excel is in long-distance shooting. Okay, there's a lot of reports during uh, Korea, uh, soldiers out there with M2s, which are select fire, with the 30-round magazines and stuff, having difficulty, now this is the myth, having difficulty piercing the enemy's wool coat at 250 meters. That's a tall statement, because you know an AR-15 would punch through it at 250 yards, right? So <laughs> the rumor being that at range, uh, the North Koreans' coats simply shrugging off 
the 110 grain ball rounds out of the M2 carbines. That's saying a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that doesn't say a lot for the, the M2 or the you know, M1 or the 30 caliber as a cartridge, but in a close-in personal defense situation, the 30 carbine is more than capable, and there's a heck of a lot of guns that can fire uh, the 30 caliber round. Um, many, many more, like you've got the AMT hardballers, uh, Ruger makes a single action revolver in 30 carbine that's really cool. Um, so there are a lot of companions. You could even get something like this like maybe one of the advisor pistols, and you could actually take an advisor pistol, the shorty, and then do like an SBR and have a folding stock on the advisor and have like a nice little short rig that fires 30 carbine. Really useful package, you know what I mean? So we thought we'd do a video on this. It's just a, a really fun rifle. Now this one's getting extremely hot and it's really hot out here. I can feel the heat transfer through the wood, uh, primarily up there on top of the handguard. I can feel it coming through, but I'll shoot 30 more rounds we wanted to test some different ammunition as well. So we got some uh, soft point SMB. We fired our uh, tool ammo. Uh, we'll try some Aguila, and this is also 110 grain ball ammunition. So uh, let's check it out. This thing's getting pretty hot. I may have to let it cool off, but uh, it is very hot outside today. Well, gun's not running bad. All right, let's have a little fun. Yep, look at that, did the same thing. Stuck case on that. Huh, it's odd. All right, let's try a few more rounds. Hmm. Very strange. Not liking the uh, Aguila. Tell you what, we're gonna stop and assess the situation. It's possible this thing is just getting really hot and I'm gonna uh, have a look at some of these fired cases. We'll get back to you in just a second here. We're gonna check it out. <laughs> so, it is really funny because it really segues into my next talking point. I was gonna talk about the differences in like GI rifles and some of these reproductions and stuff. Um, the M1 carbine is a gun that has been uh, reissued and reproduced by many, many companies uh, over the years with a variety of different GI parts as well as new produced parts. The word on the street, and this is every uh, type of consensus I can gather, is that the car slash auto ordnance uh, versions of these guns are among the best of the modern reproductions. And the reason that the reproductions have gotten such a bad rap is because of guns like the old Plainsfields, and, and you know, like those random guns that they just use like random GI parts and tons of like really poor heat treated cast parts that just fail left and right, really gave the M1 a bad reputation. And that's why the GI guns got such a great reputation for holding up so well because they were really well made guns. Now, that was the point I was gonna make before I started having issues out of the Aguila ammunition, but hold the phone. It may not be the fault of the ammo just yet. All right, so we, brushed out the barrel and we cleaned the chamber a bit, what did we notice? We had some chunks of copper that were working up in the lead of the rifling. Now you're not gonna be able to see this here, but hopefully you'll see it a shot from Chad here. But we got these little rings of copper coming out, all right? As those cartridges expand, okay, if there's anything in terms of an issue with the chamber, whether you've got uh, a lot of fouling in the chamber or you've got some chunks of carbon or maybe you've got a, an actual chunk of uh, brass or copper that has found its way into the lead or even into the chamber walls, it can cause that cartridge to not uh, eject properly. So it's very well possible that we had a buildup of copper from just firing so rapidly and that that copper was causing our aguilas to fail to extract and notice when I chambered that one round, the bolt didn't want to go all the way in the battery and I gave it a little bit of a shove. That tells you right there that the round not chambering fully tells you that there's a little bit of a blockage in the lead area and in the end of the chamber that could have been causing that to occur. That could cause our failure to eject and our failure to feed. So I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Uh, I inspected some of the brass. I don't really see an issue with the Aguila in terms of that. Uh, we cleaned out the barrel really well and scrubbed the chamber. 
Let's try the Aguila one more time here at the little M1. I want people to realize that there are little gremlins that surface when it comes to guns, right? A gun is a mechanical object. It can and will fail, just like anything can fail, whether it be ammo related, uh, a failure of maintenance, which before we made this video, I wanna say I've probably gotten about maybe 300 rounds out of this gun. So it could have already had a buildup of copper from when I shot the first 300 rounds out of it. And then it could have, you know, a little bit from that heat buildup. Who's to say, but keep your guns clean. Keep that chamber clean because that's what happens. And I wanted that to be a lesson so that people can see. Now, if we run this whole mag and we don't have an issue, then we'll know that my hypothesis is correct. Boys and girls, Professor, uh, Professor Eric in the house here. I don't know what I'm, I, I promise it's not gonna be an entire novel. It's gonna be more like a self-help pamphlet, okay? All right, all right, Aguila. All right, chambered good. Let's see if we can get through this whole mag. And uh, that should give us uh, an idea if uh, we're correct here on the copper buildup theory. All right, go back to continuing the test. There you go. All right, hypothesis confirmed, okay? Boys and girls, that's why we test our stuff, okay? That's why we like to test a variety of different ammunition when we do these videos because you don't know if a failure can be related to ammo, be related to a cleaning issue, a maintenance issue. But just the same, getting back to this uh, particular rifle, I do like these rifles. I think that they offer a really cool opportunity to shoot a piece of history without actually having to buy a real one because paratrooper M1s are really expensive. They're not cheap to buy and they're not very common. This is a great way to scratch that itch without having to drop, you know, several thousand dollars. Uh, this is a cool setup. Guys, just like any rifle, if you're gonna, you know, use a rifle to protect yourself or even if you're just gonna go out and hunt or whatever you're gonna do, or just go out to the range and shoot and have fun, always test your ammo and make sure you do the maintenance. Keep your gun clean, keep that chamber clean, keep your barrel clean, make sure your gas system is clean, and you'll make sure that you won't have any issues out of your rifle when you're out at the range or whatever you're doing. So thank you guys for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed today's video. It's always a pleasure to shoot 30 carbine. These things purr like a kitten, absolutely love them. Definitely wanna take a moment to thank all of our Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for believing in what we do and seeing value in what we do. Uh, definitely like to take a moment to thank all of you who purchased man cans. We've got some great man cans over on the website, all really great gear that we pick out just for you. So if you want to support the channel, that's one of the most direct ways you can do so. Uh, also, those of you who purchase t-shirts over on Ballistic Inc., like the one I'm wearing and many others, thank you guys so much for believing in what we do and supporting your favorite content creators. I'm going to go do some cleaning. Have a good one, guys. We'll see you next time.